Hey, what's up everyone? Sean here and just wanted to make this video uh, probably likely going to make this separate from my detailing journals uh, that I usually you know, do in the garage but I wanted to talk about uh, solely of what happened with the uh, pressure washer setup that I sort of teased in the last journal video uh, in this exact garage. I'm just, I'm just using this gun as like a you know symbol like hey I'm gonna talk about my um, pressure washer I'm just have this as a represent uh, as a representation or symbol of the pressure washer because I, I don't want to take it out I mean it's right I know it's like right here um, and it's still working and uh, I say that because uh, there are some. There are definitely lessons to learn from that uh, whole gravity feed setup that I did with uh, my pressure washer um, last time I washed, which was um, actually very recent, which was on the Sunday. I am recording this uh, Wednesday midnight um, uh, at this moment. So, for the most part, the end result was there. I mean, the end result was that a pressure washing rinseless uh well a pressure rinseless wash or a power rinseless wash rather does work right it can happen um it is possible but how to get there is um a process of itself right and you definitely have to be careful in certain steps uh, when you're using a gravity feeding system uh, especially with the air in your hose. That was what I failed to take into consideration. The machine still worked, my pressure washer still worked, and it uh, you know, put out the usual pressure for the most part, but getting there was um, conf a little confusing, uh, but I just happened to get it working after a minute uh, at most. So what was happening was um, I thought, Okay, I can just open the valve, it'll go right into the machine, and then the machine can just pump it out, right? But um, most of the uh, of these pressure washers, right, um, they can have at your house, right? It's like, what, costing around, maybe at most $200, at average, probably around 100 um, are unfortunately not designed to actually siphon nor uh, be gravity fed in a, I guess, I guess normal matter because they lack um, essentially the power or a proper pump to pump through um, water that essentially is not pressurized in the first place. That's why um, it acts differently whenever you introduce gravity feeding. So you have to do some things differently. Uh, whereas, um, you know, if you were to just take a garden hose, plug it into your pressure washer, it'll work just fine. Okay. Uh, so that was something I learned along the way, luckily, and I didn't like, you know, um, overheated the machine or anything like that or pressure washer. I did notice um, it was a little hotter or warmer. And at some point I did smell that, you know, like that, that warm or hot sort of motor smell when you have like electric motors really working they have that smell uh so i kind of like stopped at the moment and then tried to finagle with it and then eventually got it working so i think i just kind of like happened to be, uh, do most of the right steps luckily so luck uh, did play a part for me so what i did was basically was um the key thing you have to definitely do is to get the air out of the hoses uh, especially, you know, the, the garden hoses and all that stuff that's leading into the pressure washer. Uh, so, uh, and, and I, of course, I'm, I'm a, uh, as I'm talking, I'll have all the um, B-roll and all that stuff playing around in the background. Anyway, so you have to uh, pretty much let the air uh, out somehow. And the way I do it is to essentially shake up the hose that's leading from the the my... Uh, trash can uh, or my water tank that I uh, should call um, and uh, you can uh, open the open the lid and then we do is like shake it uh, so that the air can escape from the hose and out from the the water tank 
you can see it with the bubbles, right? And once those bubbles are gone, that's a, good, uh, a, pr a pretty good indicator that there's no air in that hose. So that's how I do it. Otherwise, right, if you were to actually gravity feed with a bigger uh, actual water tank, right, like, like mobile details do, that's much harder to do. But it's easier for me because I just have, um, I just have to look down the, the barrel or uh, water tank slash trash can, right, because I converted the trash can into a water tank. Uh, I can just look down on it and, uh, you know, you see bubbles come out from the inlet. So that's how I uh, know or knew that there is no more air in there. Uh, so um, that's definitely something to take into mind, right? And then um, whenever I did turn it on, um, I actually happened to just do this, right? You hold your gun uh, to let the air out. And yes, it will still work hard, but it'll definitely cut the time, right? But I think the best thing you can do is to actually just take out, take off the gun and let the hose, um, or just let, let the air out through the hose and not just, not through the gun and everything. Because the gun uh, restricts a lot of the air flow, right, along with the water flow, um, to to pretty much accentuate that pressure, right? Well, when it comes, especially when it comes to water, and that basically is the process of how you can let all the air throughout um, the pressure washer, right? Because air is kind of the enemy of a pressure washer, right? It's almost it's almost like um, you know when you're taking an injection of like I don't know. Um, uh, some sort of like vaccine or something, right? You pump something into your veins uh, or inject something into your body. Uh, when you have that needle, right? They, they, you know, flick on it, right? That's because they're trying to get all the air out, right? And plus, plus they do shoot out some of the excess liquid of whatever it is, right? The, the substance, I should say. They're doing that because they have to let the air out, right? Because you do not want to introduce air into your veins. Same thing with, um, not that I'm a doctor or anything, but um, I know enough that you're not supposed to let air be introduced into either your veins or in this case, your pressure washer. Same thing. You don't want to do that because otherwise it'll cause things to either wear out the motor or do something with the motor that'll um, essentially shorten your, the lifetime of your pressure washer if you don't do it properly. Uh, another thing too is that um, a lot of these setups actually go ahead and use a, some, uh, some sort of uh, motor, um, an extra motor, an external motor. More specifically, um, a, a booster motor, a pressure booster motor and, uh, or pump. Uh, pump booster or booster pump, boost pump, wh wh uh, however you want to call it. Which, I actually happen to have right here, but we'll talk about that more later on. So, um, uh, but let's talk about uh, what happened with the stuff I had right at hand. At, at hand. Uh, so I eventually got it working and I actually was able to see um, a lot of the dirt and grit being blasted off by the pressure washer of itself. But also like that, you know, like that, that rinse and wash sort of slight foaming because I used um, DIY details rinse and wash, and it does have some uh, some form of uh, surfactants in there. So that's why when you shake it up or agitate it, it does have some foam in there. So that's the cool one of the cool things about DIY details rinse and wash. It foams uh, as a rinse and wash, even though it's supposed to be a polymer based uh, cleaner. It does have foaming capabilities. So it's a very cool hybrid because you can still just wipe it off. You don't have to rinse it off, um, you know, being rinsed less, but you do less rinsing. Uh, I, I, I saw the uh, combined powers of the pressure washer, you know, the, this pressure of itself and the rinse wash is blasting off all that bird poo and uh, whatever, whatever else was on my car. It was really cool. It was a really cool concept that I was able to make it realize or make uh, bring it to reality for myself with with whatever I had, right? Uh, the fact that, that I just built myself this little mini water tank of sorts, um, 10 gallons, right? Or, at least, or in this case, eight-ish. Uh, um, I think what happened was the um, 
uh, what do you call it? I use this right here, uh, which is a little setup I have. This is a fireman hose nozzle, quick connected to a um, little gauge right here that I have that allows me to pretty much um, you know, read how many, how, how much gallons uh, has gone through this setup right here, or through the hose. Um, you know, and and of course, how accurate are these? I don't know. Um, and maybe what happened was, um, you know, when I saw it was like eight. It was like I, I stopped at eight point one. Uh, I think this might be off by, you know, maybe like half a gallon or something. So what I'm going to do is just do eight and a half gallons and then do it the the eight gallon dilution ratio, uh, the eight, eight, uh, eight gallon dilution, right? Which is supposed to be 256 to one for eight gallons of water, right? So that means I'm going to have to put about uh, four ounces of rinse wash, right? So I'll even probably bring that down even for a little bit to like 3.75 or something, 3.75 ounces. And the reason I would do that for next time is because um, it was streaking. It, it's, it left a lot of streaking on the windows, so maybe um, there was a little less water and a little more product somehow. So these are probably not the most accurate, but they do help give you an idea of how much water you're pumping into um, a container of sorts, right? So that's why I'll, I'll keep it, but I'll keep it around, but I'll definitely, um, you know, kind of like, um, eyeball it too as well. Uh, I'll probably put eight and a half and then I'll do the, you know, put, um, four ounces of, um, wash in there for next time. But all in all, I do really like how it turned out. Uh, my car was still clean, my pressure washers was still working and alive, um, but I do have to be a little more careful of how I set up this so, sort of, so, that sort of rig. So uh, definitely I'll do the, um, the, the, what do you call it? The pressure washer initiation thing um, with, by um, taking out the gun, right? And let, let the air out through the hose of itself rather than okay, okay well let's just pretend this hose is for the pressure washer right i know it's for a garden hose but let's just pretend right so instead of having a nozzle right here right you have to take it off take take, take off the nozzle and then you let the um the machine run that way the air can go out w much more easily and then liquid will come through hopefully uh soon after so that's the idea anyway, and uh, lessons learned and everything. So um, this is what I have now for my setup here. Um, so here are my hoses that I'm going to be using for my um, sort of gravi gravity feed setup. Uh, so let's just put one down. So this is for going in into the tank of itself and this will go through all the way here which is uh, actually now has a turn valve of sorts and a male quick connect right there as you can see and this male uh, quick connect is pretty unique because at the end it has a actual a receiving garden hose thread or female garden hose thread and then you have the male quick connect this is from essential washer these actually came in handy um, more than i thought uh, over time because because there are certain situations where um, you do want to have this sort of setup with your quick connect, and uh, if you buy your ordinary quick connects, you'll have to buy extra parts, which is basically um, extra male garden hose threads in order for you to connect the females right. Because the female quick connects all have female sides right. So you have the female quick connect receiver and then you have the female garden hose threads right so that means you have to have some somewhere a male garden hose thread coupler of sorts in uh, your setup this potentially takes off or makes uh, makes things a little simpler um, these are a little more niche but they kind of do um, that concept pretty well 
if you are in a situation which I happen to have, right? Because you can see, because you can see uh, right here, that's a garden hose uh, thread coupler, right? Both male. So what this is, uh, so it's connecting to the turn valve right here, and then it's also now connecting to this um, stainless steel hose, which has both um, female ends. All right. And yeah, so, um, and then I have this uh, elbow um, connector or coupler right here, right? So that way it can actually like, face the, um, the water tank more flush. And then this, this, now this faces down like this, right? To give it more of that gravity feeding sort of um, phenomenon, right? And then it goes all the way through um, to my pressure washer ish. And now um, this comes into this will come into play at some point. So this is what I'm talking about here. This is what you're likely going to need uh, for your pressure washer because a lot of the pressure washers are not designed to be gravity fed like that. Um, unless you get yourself a more expensive um, pressure washer, especially the electric ones, right? Like uh, um, the Krenzla and the ARs and, um, you know, if you, if you see those big pumps outside of the pressure washer, that means it is more likely to be rated for that kind of setup. But when it comes to the, you know, your average Joe electric pressure washer, when you don't see, uh, when you don't see those big brass looking pumps like that, then that's a telltale sign that it is not rated for that. Unless you have that much water, right? Let's say you have a 55 gallon tank, then that could be, um, that could overcome that issue. And that could have been another answer to my, or solution to my problem, which, it, which is to just get a bigger um, trash can to be converted into a water tank. Because I only have a 10 gallon uh, water tank, which apparently it, it has become apparent that it's not quite enough weight unless you, you know, kind of nudge it a little bit metaphorically. So, um, and that one of those metaphorical nudges is via a pump of sorts. So some people actually use a submersible pump. And I saw that through uh, Serrano uh, mobile detail, uh, no, yeah, Serrano detailing or Serrano mobile detailing. Um, I watched uh, a couple of his um, YouTube videos um, here and there, and uh, he did have that set up, um, and then kind of gave me an idea in a way. So I do want to give some sort of credit to him, to uh, Mr. Serrano, for that. The other credit I would like to give is to Gary, and forgive me for not knowing his last name, uh, from uh, uh, Slick. I think it's called. Uh, um, Stay slick mobile detailing or something, or stay slick, slick or something to do with slick detailing. I'll, I'll, I'll link it in the uh, description to point you guys to the exact direction where I got those ideas from. Um, that's where I got the idea of letting the air out through the hose rather than throughout through an open gun like this, right? If you, you know, if you hold your gun, yeah, it'll open up and then that's one way to let the air out, but it's a little harder. So if you let, just let the hose do the work you know by taking uh, disconnecting your gun then that'll definitely let out the air a lot faster so I'll let, I'll take all those steps and plus incorporating the motor and or, or this um, water pressure pump in there as well what's cool about this uh, water pressure pump is that it actually has um, a pressure switch so what that means is that this will stop, right, um, the motor after it reaches to a certain pressure in the in the hose, right? And that actually can be adjusted here. You can see the plus and minus on the pressure, right? You have to use a Allen key, like a small uh, Allen key of sorts, to turn the dial, which is really tiny already, to adjust. Um, the pressure switch so you can you can have it stop at a earlier pressure 
rating or, or a smaller pressure rating or lower rather, rather uh, or a higher pressure rating. I think the max is 50, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, so max lift, you can kind of see it here. Uh, let's hopefully let that focus, but it, it, it says right here, max lift 50 PSI or 3.4 bar, okay? Uh, max amps is 1.3, thankfully, because um, I am going to use this in conjunction of the uh, the pressure washers. Cause, and that, I think that pressure washer can do 13 amps at max. So at max for this motor is just going to be, what, 14 combined? And then the lowest, I guess, amp rating is 0.7. Uh, I know you can't see that, but let me see if I can try focusing on that maybe I'm just too close to it but anyway will it work with my hand no it won't okay so okay there you go so yeah once I do that all right I'm learning learning more things about this uh, camera here at any rate you can kind of see it here now and then the flax max flow excuse me is 4 GPM which hopefully it'll help enough to prime up the um, the pressure washer um, during the gravity fed setup. And then it, uh, I believe this is uh, supposed to be, yeah, it's just, it says right here, it is a self priming uh, pump motor of sorts. Runs dry without damage. So you don't have to worry about that, I guess. Thermal overload, uh, automatic restart. So yeah, so if if the, if any of at any event, this motor does um, overheat, it will stop itself hopefully and um, start back up uh, as soon as it cools down or whatever. Uh, more stuff on it. I like the features um, that it does have like these rubber feet, so it doesn't like slip around. It's actually pretty nice. And then, of course, um, I believe these inlets or outlets, I, I, I guess, are half inch uh, MPTs. Uh, I could be wrong. Uh, you can read up on that uh, once I leave the link, a product link in the description below. But yeah, um, this does have um, uh, a strainer of sorts, a 50 mesh strainer. You can see it there going through that way so this goes out and um, you can it also I like this particular um, motor or pressure pump from eco worthy because it comes with a garden hose thread inlet and also an outlet uh, so male garden hose thread and a female garden hose thread converter. So that does uh, really help with the garden hose set, uh, setup. And uh, hopefully this will be the key to make sure the pressure pump, or excuse me, pressure washer will not strain during the sort of priming process. Cause I think once you get it all going, then it's um, a cakewalk from there. You, it just works, right? And, um, uh, and then they'll like suck up all the product or water uh, from the water tank that you um, set up for yourself. So uh, I do feel that, you know, the initial setup worked, but I got away with it. So I definitely won't do it uh, every time, right? Um, and along the way, uh, I, I, um, an idea sort of hashed in my head, right? Another idea, so uh, if you will. Sorry, let me grab my seat because I, I'm tired. I'm kind of tired of squatting, but yeah. <laughs> anyway. Oh yeah. So another feature that I uh, almost forgot to say that it does come with a um, a plug and for your outlet, a wall outlet of sorts. This is supposed to be uh, either 110. Or, yeah, it's a 110 volt um, water pressure pump. Let me. Let the thing fo help focus. It is a 110 volt AC motor. So you can plug this to your wall, 
they do have a 12 volt version that you can just plug into your RV or your car or whatever if you want. Uh, if you do have that sort of setup for yourself, that's uh, kind of a neat idea. So basically, um, yeah, so you can plug this and your um, pressure washer, right, with a generator, two-way two generator for your mobile setup, but yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, obviously we have a quick connect right here, both male, or no, excuse me, both females, right? But I told you, right, as I told you, these essential washer quick connects are pretty special because, like I said, this female um, quick connect has a male guard hose thread. Uh, I don't want to take it out right now because it's already in there and I don't want to mess with it. Uh, oh yeah, and then you can, so it is able to go into the female guard hose thread uh, converter from the motor that came with. And this part is um, thread taped. So that's all taken, taken care of, same here. It's all hidden because of this strainer right here. Same thing here, same thing there, kind uh, yeah. You can kind of see the thread tape right there, that white stuff. Um, so yeah, so hope, I, have, I have not tested it just yet. I just uh, hope, hope that um, this all works the next time I use this setup, which hopefully will be the next, or this coming weekend. Um, yeah. So, uh, you can kind of get an idea right now of how, what it looks like here. So I can hopefully do this with one hand. Okay. And, oh, there we go. Wow, I did all that in one hand. So this is one side. That's, that's the water tank side. And then right here, will be a little harder to, to do with one hand because of how these ones work. But, let's see that click. Ah, there you go. I had to kind of nudge it there. And this side will be where um, my pressure washer will go. So pretty much that is, here I'm, I'll, I'll do that like that so you can kind of see. You can kind of see the uh, the idea, right? Uh, water tank on that side, pressure washer on that side. This will go this way, and then hopefully this strainer will do its job of take, picking up any particular uh, particles or whatever. This will be plugged into a wall outlet, and hopefully we get the proper gravity feeding setup without any worry. Um, but like I kind of hinted, another idea kind of popped into my head because potentially I could use this setup to help my garden hose um, setup. Because what this pretty much is, um, in a way, is just a mini pressure washer, right? Because all it is is just a motor for at least most electric ones anyway. Um, there, you know, for uh, the gasoline ones and the more powerful, expensive electric ones have a motor that's like kind of stylized as a pump or something. That's why, um, again, you need this pump for gravity feeding most household pressure washers. Whereas the more professional ones or commercial ones, not so much because it has enough power to suck through water on its own. Whereas the garden hose, um, and the main line, right, provide that pressure for your household pressure uh, washer. Okay, but um, this alone could it help enhance? Um, where's my usual garden hose nozzle? There you go. So let's just pretend that a garden hose is attached to this, um, and I can like, you know. Uh, use it. Use this as like a pseudo pressure washer with, with this potentially. So that could be really cool if that's the case. And the fact that this uh, motor or pump, rather, uh, pressure washer or water pressure pump, can um, uh, turn off with 
at a certain pressure so it won't um, you know um, strain itself that way so potential idea that I can just bust out this instead of the pressure washer maybe <laughs> possibly but you know I can't help sometimes but to use my car sure pressure washer because it does it, it is fun it is fun to use a pressure washer you know I get it right do you really need it for the most part no but it is really nice um, to have at the house when you're, when you're a mobile detailer that's a different story all right um, sorry just making sure it was connected correctly but yeah um, so, so um, yeah obviously you don't want to use this alone for your mobile detailing I mean maybe you could I don't know I I, 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 I don't know. I'm not a mobile detailer I'm a weekend warrior but um, yeah I mean I love just experimenting with things um, and see the results of it so um, if my pressure washer was able to get away Scott relatively Scott free uh, with just the pressure washer itself alone with the gravity feeding setup then I'm pretty sure this motor will just seal the deal uh, if you will but hey um, if I get a long enough hose for this side right which I potentially could have um, this again this could be just a pseudo mini pressure washer for your garden hose uh, setup you know so and uh, by the way this costed me about 70 bucks at most 80 bucks um, again you'll you'll find in the description with the link uh, 60 I think it was 68 to be more precise but yeah so you could pr probably get away with a quote-unquote 68 dollar um, setup right you don't you, you only need to spend 68 dollars potentially for a pretty potentially good uh, garden hose pressure washer thing you know and maybe um, even um, skip out on like the detail cake although the detail detail cake is pretty nice um, I wish I can replace my IK sprayers but the IK sprayers have like that niche reasoning for to be around but once I actually, you know, tuned my detail keg, that could be a different story. But that'll be for that'll be for another time. I really do want to uh, try out the setup again with those enhancements for next time. So yeah, um, a lot of talking. I know. I I, I do apologize for that. Um, I know it's gonna. I know it's been going on pretty long now. But uh, I just wanted to show you guys that you can do this too. But um, I do want to tell you guys that. Of course, you do want to take some precautions, especially with the air. You do not want the air in your hose. And um, uh, the probably the best thing is to actually get yourself um, some barbs and actually use a uh, some sort of like mm, a polyurethane hose or po uh, poly hose, as it's called now, um, because you can see whether there's air in the in the liquid or not right though I can get away with it for my setup because I can just look through the look down on the um, my water tank and just shake it up until the bubbles um, stop, stop coming out uh, so that is um, pretty much how that's going to um, be set up there yeah uh, fun stuff, fun stuff. Um, so that is pretty much it, I believe. Um, I'll definitely make sure there's no air on this side either, right? Because that's that's where it does get a little tricky. But yeah, um, I'll probably just like you know run the motor. No, actually, I don't know. There's still stuff to learn about this setup, um, and hopefully, um, I can uh, pull through and 
successfully um, have another setup for my car washing. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. I don't want to go on too long. Um, the video's already going on long enough. But yeah. Um, so yeah. That's my sort of experience with it so far. Um, I guess that I guess I um, this could be a journal just for this uh, whole gravity feeding thing, right? The gravity feeding setup is getting its own journal, I guess, maybe potentially, or be a, just a separate video. But yeah. Anyways, um, that is pretty much it for this video. Um, what do you guys think? Have any comments? Do you have any suggestions? If you want to help. Um, you know, help me figure out like, okay, what, what I need to do now or, you know, di or do this or maybe, the, maybe another tip or something. Um, or any other comment relating to this video. Leave me down below. Hit the like, subscribe. It really helps out. Really do appreciate it, guys. So yeah, that's, this has been my sort of rambling slash journal talking about my gravity feeding pressure washer setup experience so far. And my, and what I learned from it, and hopefully what I'm gonna do to sort of tie up those loose ends. So yeah, maybe I'll buy a switch or something, or some sort of switch for this side. That way I can just turn it, turn it off, and then, um, and then when I'm ready, turn it back on or something. Because there's no switch for this. There is no switch for this. So as soon as I plug it in, it's going. It's going, baby. <laughs> so, yeah. But um, we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, I'm not sure if the, what do you call, when, while the liquid is running through here and then through the pressure washer hose, can I plug in the, the gun, right? It's a bit of a hassle, for sure. But yeah, we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll figure it out along the way. So uh, that's it. Thank you very much, and hope to see you all in the next video. All right, stay clean. Shout out.